UPOP, the acronym itself, stands for the International Union for the Protection of Plant Varieties. It's based in Geneva, Switzerland. It's comprised of member countries that finance it based on um, units, uh, depending on which version of UPOP they have. And uh, there's approximately 71 countries that are members out of the 196 countries that we have in the world. We're very opposed to the UPOP 91 regime because it takes autonomy away from farmers and from citizens in doing what they do with seeds and puts the control mechanisms in the hand of the, of the breeder or the company that the breeder works for. UPOP 91 has all of these rights for the breeders that uh, severely restrict the ability of farmers to save and reuse seed through various mechanisms that I spoke of. And UPOP 78 uh, allows for royalty collection only on the seed sale itself. It doesn't allow for what UPOP 91 has, the cascading right to collect revenues anywhere in the food system. Uh, UPOV 78 is silent on farm save seed. It uh, doesn't speak to it, so farmers are able to, to save protected varieties. It's because it's a common practice of agriculture, and this at the time was just considered something that's done. UPOV 91, with its collection of uh, rights for the breeders, seeks to restrict that significantly. The, the length of protection is longer, uh, 15 years versus 20 years in UPOP 91. Double protection uh, in 78, you can only have uh, plant variety protection. You can't have plant variety protection and patents in 91, you can. For farmers, um, the key thing that they need to know is, is A, they, they might be forced into a situation where they have to buy seed on an ongoing basis. Uh, just like the canola model that we have that gene patents allow companies to construct contractual arrangements that, that specifically obligate farmers not to save seed and have resulted in uh, an incredible escalation in the price of canola seed. So now farmers are paying massive amounts of money to, uh, on a per acre basis to, to seed canola. This, of course, is exactly the model that they would like for all crop kinds, and UPOV 91 is one of those mechanisms. So a farmer um, purchasing canola seed, a one bushel bag of seed, is paying around $600, actually. He can be paying more than that. Uh, a farmer selling a bushel of canola in the market will see, currently receive about $10. That seed that he sells actually is viable to grow as, as uh, that crop is viable to grow as seed. So he's paying 60 times the amount because of restrictions imposed by patents and contracts and these intellectual property rights. Granted that he would have costs growing his own seed, he would still have to get it cleaned, he would still have to get it treated. But that's a, a very, very low comparatively uh, to what the, um, the big seed companies are charging for that bushel of canola, that bag of canola. And, and I think that's just reflective of A, how powerful they are, B, how inefficient they are, and C, how greedy they are because uh, they want such a high factor for that uh, canola seed. And uh, I mean, why, why would we as an economy accept that this model is appropriate to extract that kind of money from farmers that would stay within the country to have it transferred out of the country to the likes of Monsanto and Bayer and Syngenta and Dow and uh, the collection of companies that uh, utilize these tools, obviously, to maximize the amount of money they can pull out of farmers. It's exploitation.